things out on my counter. I have lots of ground beef. I have a whole rotisserie chicken I'm working with. I'm working with a pork roast. This is from our pig, actually. I have some gravy sauce that I made. Uh, I'm going to be making a lasagna. Yeah, I have a, I have a list, and it kind of keeps growing on what I want to cook and make ahead today. All right, so this is one of my favorite pizza sauces. I've tried making my own homemade pizza sauce. You know, the pizza sauce out of a jar, like the Walmart brand isn't bad at all. But I'm telling you, Uncle Rudy's pizza sauce, it's the best. So I'm using four cans, I'm doubling the recipe, crushed tomatoes, but I accidentally grabbed two petite, so I'm gonna go switch them out. Well, I'm gonna have to use my mandolin thing in because I'm out of crushed tomatoes, so that is gonna have to go on my shopping list. And I'm gonna have to blend these up just a little in the pot. I'm also taking inventory. This is my list for my food storage room. If you guys had seen a video, I'll leave a link. Um, we're trying to live off our food storage and kind of get an idea of how much we're using. And so I definitely will say it's not a three month food storage. I would definitely say it's a six month. Hey, I'm gonna finally chop a whole onion. All right, I, as I was cutting this onion, I was realizing that I'm gonna save the ends and some of the skins to these onions because when I pull all the chicken off that rotisserie chicken, I'm gonna use the bones to make a chicken stock. So I have some celery and carrots and everything. So I'm gonna do that today too. I could actually do it in my slow cooker where I don't have to manage it over the stove. So I think once I am done getting this tomato sauce going, I will work on the chicken next. My eyes are burning. Oh my gosh. My eyes are on fire. I'm just so happy to make these meals for my family. Oh my gosh, my eyes are burning. Look at this. Woo! So much for putting on makeup today. Oh my eyes, my eyes. Okay, I'm gonna add my onions in. I have a ton of spices here, balsamic vinegar, olive oil. Now, in the recipe I leave you down below for the pizza sauce, it says a fourth cup of extra virgin olive oil. I don't. I start off with tablespoons and just kind of eyeball it and see the consistency because I did that one time and I had too much olive oil. So I really just look at it as I go. So I've got like anise seed and Italian seasoning, basil, um, crushed red pepper, parsley, salt, pepper, paprika, garlic. So I'm just gonna do my thing and get it all in here. Oh, and brown sugar, but I am doubling this recipe. got this really cool crusher is it molder what's it called oh my gosh but I got it from home goods I've been wanting one for a long time so I'm gonna use my anise seed in it to ground up my anise seed and this is what makes the sauce so good if you don't know what it is or never tried it it kind of has like a black licorice taste but it's not overpowering in this at all all right that grounded it up pretty dang good I gotta make a list I didn't almost out of a lot of these seasonings, so I need to put them on my shopping list. Oh, I gotta double this. That's right, I gotta double this. So I am gonna start off with a fourth, a cup though, of the olive oil, because it says one fourth cup, you know, just doing a normal batch, but I think I'm gonna do a fourth cup for both these batches. I just don't want it too oily. All right, I'm gonna get this on the stove and get this simmering away. Okay, this is gonna do its thing on here. Might need to use the machine. Uh, I'll let it cook down and then see how it does, but I might need to, because I don't want a lumpy pizza sauce, so. All 
All right, I'm going to massacre this rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Taking all the skin off and the fat as much as I can. I'm gonna make sure that I save all the bones to do the broth. I got both dogs down here sniffing around me because they're like, ooh, she's cooking. All right, in my slow cooker, I have all the chicken bones in here. I have the onions, some chopped up onions, some of the onion skins and the ends. I have carrots, celery. I'm gonna just put some pepper and salt and some poultry seasoning. And then I'm just gonna cover this in water. Now I'm not gonna cook it on low because of just the time that I have. So I'm gonna cook it on high. All right, it's on high. And I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And we'll have chicken stock. Okay, I have all the chicken in this bowl. I'll be making some enchiladas with this. So I'm just gonna wrap this up and put it in the fridge until tonight. Okay, the pizza sauce is bubbling away. I'll keep letting this simmer. You, you're supposed to let it simmer for about an hour or so. And it's supposed to reduce down. So I think I'm gonna grab the blender and just um, the immersion blender and blend this up a bit. All right, there we go. Much better. Okay, ooh, this is hot. That did the trick. Perfect, crushed. So there we go. Okay, right now I'm gonna brown up this ground beef, two pounds to make some taco meat. We'll drain the fat, add the taco seasoning, and set it aside and let it cool. And then we'll get it put in the fridge. I think I'm gonna do four pounds because I'll have one in the fridge this week for tacos and I'll freeze, because I can lay that flat in a Ziploc bag and freeze it and that just will slide into your freezer. I have plenty of ground beef. I could thaw out more. I have more on the counter thawing. Turn that on and get that going for taco meat. What I'm also gonna do is get these ground beefs thawed out. I'm gonna cut the metal tie tip, the twisty metal part off so I could put this in the microwave so I'm gonna pull that off. All right, I'm gonna get these in the microwave and start the thawing process. It's gonna be a little loud with my microwave, but we're gonna get this ground beef going for the tacos. I'm going to also open up these two ground beefs that I've thought out to start making the meatloaf and mold it. Okay, right now I am just draining the beef. Look at how much came off that. I'm gonna be using this Tony's taco seasoning that I got from Sam's Club. Four pounds of beef, so a fourth cup for a pound. So a cup. Alright, get this all combined. And then it'll thicken up. And then we'll cool it and divide it up. Because tacos are already like a super quick meal. But if you have this step already done ahead of time, it'll make it even faster for you. We probably have tacos twice a month. Like we'll do it once every two weeks. Depends on our mood. Pick it up and do its thing. Okay, I'm gonna start on the Salisbury steak patties. This is the best Salisbury steak recipe we've ever had. There was one night we made four different kinds years and years ago, and this one won. But I am gonna freeze the patties just because I'm gonna have the meatloaf this week. But we're gonna have the pesto ranch chicken, tacos, meatloaf. I am gonna put the lasagna in the freezer because I'm not gonna cook the noodles. They're gonna just go in the casserole hard. And then when you freeze it and then bake it, your noodles come out perfect. You don't need to cook your lasagna noodles if you're freezing them, you guys. Saves you a huge step. All right, working with the pork roast. I'll get this marinated. This will be marinated for quite a few days. 
We're having family dinner with extended family tomorrow. I got my pork roast in a bag and it's gonna marinate for like two days because we have fam we, we're gonna have chicken enchiladas tonight, family dinner tomorrow night. So this will be cooked on Monday. You could use Coke or Dr. Pepper, and I'm not a fan of Dr. Pepper. I think it tastes like death. It's horrible. But uh, with this recipe, it tastes much better. So you're gonna need a cup of Dr. Pepper or Coke, not diet. And you're gonna end up using a whole 20 fluid ounces with this recipe once you put it in the slow cooker. And then you're gonna need brown sugar, a fourth a cup. The sweet pulled pork. Oh, yeah. And then the Dr. Pepper. See, Dr. Pepper's good for something. It, only this. <laughs> it's, it's so gross. <laughs> All right. And I'm gonna also put it in another bag too, in case it spills in the fridge. Um, but, and then I'll be flipping it often the next two days. But with this marinating longer, it's gonna taste so good. So. Can't wait. We haven't had sweet pulled pork in a long time. So, all right, I'll get another bag. I think there's six of these in here. All right, this is going in the fridge. If you'd like to see the full video on how to make Cafe Rio sweet pulled pork in salads, you can put them in burritos, so good. Like I said, the video is down below. It is amazing. I make this every time we go to the lake. So good. All right, I use petite diced tomatoes in my meatloaf. This, you guys, is what gets your meatloaf to be so moist and you this is not a dry meatloaf like at all i do drain some of the liquid and then i throw them in there this will keep your meatloaf from being dry and that's part of the reason why people don't like meatloaf okay you're gonna need some quick oats and i don't measure but i do put some red crumbs about probably about a fourth a cup or so i don't know i just throw it in and some salt and pepper again I don't measure I just add and this recipe is from Paula Dean and it's one of our favorites I couldn't find a recipe for a long time in our marriage until I got the one of Paula Dean's cookbooks and we tried this and it was like there it is so when I make this you can make one big huge loaf done it a zillion times but if you're gonna put it in your freezer, I like to just do two smaller loaves in my pan and it'll cook faster. I think I'm gonna do three little loaves. It just cooks faster. You can also make little muffins, put them in your muffin t um, pan and you could have quicker meatloafs. And we'll do the topping when it's time to bake. We don't get to it this week. I've got a meatloaf for next week. In my freezer meal binder, I made stickers for all my go-to freezer meals and I have one for meatloaf. It has the instructions, the topping, all of that. Okay, if you're wondering where I'm at on time, I think I started close to 10 a.m. maybe. And it is two o'clock, so I've been doing what you've seen and be a mom. So now I wanna get the taco meat put away now that it's cooled down and work with the pizza sauce now that hopefully it's cooled down some. All right, I'm just gonna put a taco meat sticker on this bag. So I have two pounds of taco meat in here. I was able to squish that in. So that is for this week. We'll put that in the refrigerator. And then I have two pounds or just a little over two pounds in this bag 
All right, so I'm gonna smush this out. And I have room in my freezer for this. The tacos on another night and I'll thaw out faster, flatter than in bulk. Okay, I'm gonna get this in my freezer. All right, look at this. Oh, so good. Okay, so, and the kids can make mini pizzas with this as well during the week. And I bought some, like a couple weeks ago, some refrigerated pizza dough, like from Walmart. Some pie crust like this, so they can quickly make some pizza for lunches. So, this has to get used up this week, so they can pull this out. We go through pizza kicks, and then we're over it, and then we're back on it again. my pizza sauce one's going in the freezer one is going in the refrigerator pizza sauce this is going in to the freezer and refrigerator so I have these chicken thighs that I need to use up this week so I'm going to be making um, crock pot pesto ranch chicken one of our favorite favorite recipes I need some pesto the ranch dressing mix and chicken broth. I don't use the packets, I just use a container which means I'll be using three tablespoons of this. And I have some pesto and I'm gonna need six ounces. All right, I just measured out six ounces of pesto. So to this I'm gonna add my ranch dressing and my chicken broth. Make sure I mark what I'm taking out out of the pantry. And I think I'm going to do another packet since I have this chicken broth opened. Add it to the freezer because I'm using frozen chicken. If you already have frozen chicken like I have that are separately frozen, you could always make freezer meals later instead of trying to thaw out a big clump of packaged chicken because you can't freeze it again unless you cook it and then freeze it. Eight boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And I'll just do another one with this bag of chicken. It needs to get used. Pour that on. All right. You know what, I have enough to do three pesto ranch chickens and I was just in my freezer and I have another packet of thighs. I'm gonna make um, another one after this. So I'm gonna get three out of this recipe. And then we'll have pesto ranch chicken once a week for the next three weeks because uh, I've got more in this can to do a third so that is what we're gonna do so now I'm gonna make a note in my freezer meal binder that one jar of this basil pesto from Costco it's 22 ounces we'll do three three pesto ranch chicken thigh freezer meals and so will one can of chicken broth okay Yum. Now it looks like I'm putting six of these in because I'm using a half of a tablespoon. So it will equal three. And I'm gonna need to put more of this on my list. I am out. So it looks like I'm going back to Sam's Club for a lot of spices and herbs. Hey. So all I need to concentrate on right now is the shepherd's pie mix, the lasagna, and chicken enchiladas for dinner. <laughs> I'm so tired, but I'm gonna keep going because this pays off. If you could do this all in one day, throw together some meals and in side dishes and baking goods, you're gonna be exhausted, but you're gonna thank yourself. Future you is gonna thank you so much for doing it. I'm gonna get going on the shepherd's pie mixture. I need two pounds of ground beef. Uh, I'm gonna chop up some onions and get them in here as well. And I don't need to buy any more of the ranch um, because I had some in my food storage room. A little thought came to me like, I think I knew I was running out and I did, so voila. But I am gonna put it on my list to replace this one. So I always have one, so I will still put it on my list. But yay, I have some. All right friends, we are done with one box of cut green beans from our food storage room. So now I have this palette, and then this whole one here. And then I need 
corn. This is cream style corn. This is for my um, corn chowder that we absolutely love. And then here is my corn back here. So I do need to grab another, nope, I got one back there. So I've got regular corn back there and then a few cans here. And then from here, I'm going to need two cans of tomato soup. So two of those and I gotta mark these down in my books so I can keep track. Okay, I drained the beef. Now I'm gonna add two cans of corn. And of course it's drained and the green beans will be drained also. Okay, I turned the, the stove off so the meat can start cooling. And then the tomato soup. I'm also gonna put some garlic salt in. I seasoned the meat with salt and pepper. All right, and when this cools, I'll add it to my aluminum pan. All right, I am gonna let this cool off. Okay, I'm gonna work on the lasagna. I've got some ricotta cheese here. I'm gonna put in, I don't know, probably about a cup of cheese. I'm just gonna eyeball it, or more. I don't know, I really don't pay attention when it comes to this. Some more, one of my favorite cheeses, the Pecorino Romano. Don't know, I'm just gonna grate it in there. Couldn't even tell you how much I put in there. Okay, then I'm gonna add an egg, and then I'm gonna add some parsley, no clue, just put it in there, and some Italian seasoning. Okay, get in and start mixing that. The other day I made my Italian gravy and I put some in the fridge. It's delicious. All right, I'm gonna put a layer of sauce down at the bottom. Start layering my pasta. And then I'm gonna add the cheese. And you don't need oven ready noodles either. These are regular noodles. It's fantastic. And all that moisture from freezing and then cooking it, all that moisture, bam. Your noodles get cooked, they're soft, oh. Okay, I actually have room for this in that small freezer as well. I rearranged some things, so this lasagna is going in. Get out of my way, dogs! Oh my gosh, you guys, I have dogs under my feet. They're going crazy with all the smells. All right, I'm gonna cover this. I'll, I'll make mashed potatoes when it's time to cook it, and I'll pile them on top. But I'll probably start this first in the oven frozen and then come in with the potatoes put a layer on and cook it all together okay put its label shepherd's pie on and i'm gonna make room for this in my freezer all right i'm working on dinner in my pan i've got my chicken to start on those chicken enchiladas and then you need some cream cheese i always have cream cheese in my refrigerator so i'm going to salt and pepper the chicken I have my oven preheating. I'm also going to add some hot, this time, diced green chilies. And we're gonna heat this through, get the cheese all melty, and then we'll make them into enchiladas with our flour tortillas, get them in a baking dish, put the sauce all over it, add the cheese, and get it in the oven. So with starting on dinner, it is four o'clock and we'll have the chicken enchiladas and then I'm going to clean up the mess. I tried to clean as I went along, it just didn't happen. I am opening the can and I will put 
a layer in this pan here if you could see it. it's not as bright but put a little layer down okay i have my flour tortillas i'm gonna use up there's two packages open so i'm gonna use up this one first how do you make your in chicken enchiladas i would love to know leave it down below i'm gonna use um this fiesta blend cheese I could save it for my tacos this week, but I have blocks of cheddar cheese that I can just shred, um, like this one. So I'm tired, so I'm just gonna use this one right now. Pour this on top. It's a lot, but it is yummy. All right, I'm gonna smother it in this cheese. All right, there's a lot of cheese on there. Oh, let's just use the whole thing bag. That's just delicious. Okay, it's gonna go in the oven until it's all melted and hot and bubbly. All right, I'm just gonna put a timer on for 15 minutes and go from there. So, while that is cooking, while that is cooking, let's clean up this mess and then I will work with the chicken stock that's in here. So, let's get all this cleaned up. <laughs> Okay, now that the kitchen's clean and the Salisbury steak patties are all frozen, we're gonna get them in this uh, freezer bag. I'm gonna hurry and get them in here. They're not gonna stick together because of how they're individually frozen. And I'm one step ahead when I wanna make Salisbury steak in the next week or week and a half. Okay, my chicken broth is done, or chicken stock. So I have a strainer in this big bowl. I'm just going to pour this in with all the veggies. Wait, I'm just gonna strain this out. So I hope this motivated you to make some make-ahead meals or some freezer meals. I'm glad that I have some meals ready to go with my busy schedule. It really does help out if you can find a few hours in your day or on the weekend like I do and just crank out some meals for the week. You'll just be one step ahead and it'll feel so good. Again, all the recipes are down below. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you soon. Bye.